Okay, it says it's preparing to live stream the meeting. Okay. Redirecting to YouTube. Okay. I think you should be ready to go ahead. Okay. Okay, Laura. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Laura Kasdorf. I did not grow up gardening, but I've been a master gardener volunteer with the Chippewa Valley Master Gardeners, Gardener Association for over 15 years. I garden in the yard of our town lot, and I also have a plot at the Chippewa Falls Community Garden at Marshall Park, and I've had that for 11 years. I've learned many things from my gardening successes and even more from my failures. I want to thank uh, Augusta, Clear Lake, Ellsworth, and Amory Libraries for coordinating this virtual gardening series and for inviting me to participate by presenting in honor of National Money Smart Week Frugal Gardening Tips. Um, please, please check out the other excellent virtual presentations on gardening on the Augusta Memorial Public Library YouTube channel. Many of the ideas I will talk about today, such as seed starting and saving, Weeding, soil amendment, and fertilizing are explained in much more depth in some of those lectures. The University of Wisconsin Extension is another great source for research-based information on gardening topics. And if you have any questions as I'm speaking, please feel free to type them into the chat. And at the end, we uh, will take those questions. So it's spring, <clears throat> we've got the planting bug. And we're more than ready to start enjoying our two short Wisconsin growing season by stocking up on plants and gardening supplies. Your best first stop is your local greenhouse where the gardening professionals really know what they're doing and do it well. If like me, your eyes are bigger than your shopping cart and your garden budget, the foray into the garden center can be a challenge. So here, starting at the ground level are some ideas to help you make good choices to stretch your shopping dollars. Buying seed is less expensive than buying plants. The seed starting process can be intimidating, but there are lots of resources to guide you through it. Your county extension office, YouTube, workshops, books, garden center staff, and experienced gardeners in your circle of friends and family can provide you with the know-how and confidence to start at least a few of the things that you want to grow from seed. You may need to make an initial purchase of some basic seed starting equipment but your growing setup will serve you for many years. To make the seed starting process even more economical, consider sharing seeds with friends, doing a group seed exchange or visiting a seed lending library. Unless you have a large garden, it's unlikely you'll use all the seeds that come in a packet. Seed is good for a couple of years, but you don't want to carry them over for longer than that as the germination rate declines with every year that passes. So share with friends if you can. Seed libraries are often at public libraries. I checked with a few and they seem to be on hold in this current climate that we're in, um, but they hope to be back in business in the future. Eau Claire Library did already this year have a, a grab and go kind of uh, seed pickup and they said they might again, but I, I don't have any more information about that. You would have to check with them. Saving seed is another option, and we'll talk about more about that in a few minutes. When you do buy plants, pick up your favorite ornamentals, herbs, and vegetables early, and as plants grow, repot at least once before your plants go out to the yard or garden plot. If you buy plants in four or six packs, it costs considerably less than buying the same number of plants of a more mature size. This plan does require that you nurture the juvenile plants indoors or in a sheltered place until they're big enough and the weather allows them to go all the way out to the garden. If you buy small annuals that are already blooming, painful as it may be, pinch the flowering top off to encourage plant growth for bigger, better blooms later in the season. As garden centers like to get things blooming early so that we can see what we're getting, but um, being brave enough to pinch the tops off will give you more production later. Uh, 
Um, you can purchase plants that are easily turned into more plants. Coleus and basil are two examples of plants that can be easily turned into multiple plants by rooting cuttings in vermiculite or a vase of water and then potting that cutting after it's developed a good root system. The parent plant will sprout new growth after you've cut some of the stems. And if you do it early in the season, you'll be able to add the starts to your garden by the time danger of frost is gone. This pretty little plant on my windowsill is Plectranthus, and it, it is a, an annual that I've had good luck uh, taking cuttings of and, and creating more plants. Not only can you increase the number of plants in your landscape by dividing, but you can, it, excuse me, it can provide you with filler for your pots and window boxes. The basic idea is to cut apart or separate roots of a large plant to make more plants. Hostas are great for this. They divide easily and quickly form nice new clumps of leaves. It's hard to hurt them while you're dividing them. Other easy and attractive options for division are cranesbill geranium, golden creeping jenny, lamium, virginia, sedums, and even small shrubs. For several, several years, I've used hosta to fill out my large plant pots and window boxes, um, a variety of colors, shapes, and sizes with the addition of a showy annual makes for a very lush and colorful container planting and really cuts down on the number of plants I need to purchase. I add one of the tall salvias such as black and blue or Wendy's Wish for a different texture in the pot and they are very good at attracting hummingbirds. So perennials that you use in this way by in, in, in your containers can be put back into the garden before it freezes and they can overwinter there and then you can dig them and use them again next year. And by that time, they're usually ready to be divided again. The picture here is a border that alternates autumn, autumn joy sedum and garlic chives. And I'm sure that that started from just one of each kind of plants. And now I have enough to fill the length of a sidewalk along our garage. When warm weather comes to stay, pair house plants such as spider plant, Tratus cantia, and begonias with flowering annuals for beautiful container plantings or display them on their own as shown here with this spider plant on top of the rain barrel. One of our neighbors has hanging baskets of a show-stopping combo of red dragon wing begonia, spider plant, and a purple Tratus cantia. They look like fireworks on this front porch and they are beautiful all season long. Using houseplants in this way is uh, another technique to save on buying lots of annuals and it gives your houseplants a little vacation. When the houseplants first come out, make sure they don't get sunburnt. They probably aren't used to direct, direct sun like that. And at the end of the season, make sure you take them in before the nights get cold enough to damage them. You can look up more detailed tips for acclimating plants as they go from in to out and back again to help you with the process. Overwinter annuals for repeat performance. Geraniums are especially good at surviving the winter indoors, either by going into dormancy or by being placed in a sunny location and continually watering as a house plant. More details for overwintering by either method can be found online. Coleus and begonias may also be good candidates for overwintering. If you have the room and the patience, give those and others a chance to hang in there until next year when they can go outside again, or take cuttings to root and pot for new plants. And this will help you not have to buy quite so many plants again in the spring. Seeds of um, many hybrid, non-hybrid, excuse me, Heirloom plants can be saved and stored for sowing in subsequent years. Seed Savers Exchange is a business in Iowa that has really good information about the process. If, and they also sell heirloom and, and non-hybrid seeds. They're, it's a great resource. If plants in your garden do seed themselves, let them grow where they fall or transplant their volunteer seedlings to other locations in your garden where they might thrive. 
Brown-eyed Susan, Grandpa Ott Morning Glory, and Husker Red Penstemon are a few garden plants that readily come back year to year from seed in my garden. And I just, if, if, they, if they start to grow where I don't want them, I just gently dig them out and move them to the place that I do. And they're also good, good little things to share with your friends. Selective deadheading can control reseeders if they're a little too zealous at creating new plants. The garlic chives in the previous picture, for example, is a very prolific reseeder. If I do not deadhead them, I have had garlic chives growing in every crack of my sidewalk and patio stones. So I, I try not to make the mistake of letting that happen. Heirloom vegetable seeds can, also, seeds can also be saved for next year's crop. Some saving is as easy as popping open a pod to retrieve the beans inside. Others like tomatoes take a bit more effort, but with a minimum of instruction, saving the seeds is completely doable. The Garden of Eden beans pictured here in the top picture were given to me by a friend over 10 years ago. And every year I grow plenty to eat, eat as a green bean, dry to eat and to share and plant again. It is very tempting to want to try every new and exotic plant that appears for sale, but resist unless you know that it is a, has a good chance of surviving more than one season. If you haven't seen a plant in your area before, it might be because it is not meant to be here. Local greenhouses are quite conscientious about offering plants that are suitable for a growing zone. Big box pop-up garden centers, not so much. Their distributors are likely providing plants to stores in a region that crosses a spectrum of climates. So read the plants tag, look up its growing requirements, and then decide if you want to invest in a plant that may or may not thrive in your garden. Some of the best bets for survival in your garden are native plants. And when plants survive, there's no need to buy replacement plants. Most garden centers have dedicated sections of native perennials suited to our Wisconsin climate, but do look them up to double check suitability for your particular space. Some natives like wet feet and others very dry. Some like shade and some prefer lots of sun. So try, do your best to make, make the choices that will uh, have the best chance of success in your, in your garden spot. And although it's illegal to sell invasive plants, it still happens. Check the DNR's website for lists of those plants and avoid potential problems by not bringing any of the listed plants home. In addition to being hardy, native plants have the added value of attracting a diverse variety of butterflies, bees, and birds to your backyard and usually once established require a lot less watering than other perennials. There are no magic tricks for eliminating garden chores, so I encourage you to not waste your gardening dollars on items that make those promises. Gardening is fun, but there is a little effort involved. For a successful garden, stick with elbow grease and high quality, time-tested tools rather than falling for the newest as seen on TV offer. Even if you can, act now and get a second one free. Investment in a small collection of sturdy tools and equipment is your best bet. I love my Fisker shears and pruners, garden tub trugs, stainless steel hand trowel, and my nitrile gloves, along with a spade for dividing plants and digging holes and a couple of types of rakes. I am pretty much set. There are many ways to turn what you have on hand into what you need. Before I discard anything, I try to think how it might be repurposed in the garden. Here are some examples on the screen and I'm not gonna go over every one, but um, they're just some ideas and believe me, Pinterest is loaded with more. It's not strictly gardening, but I have many items I've gotten rid of in the house that work well in the garden um, as decoration and enhancing the plants. 
metal wall sculptures can hang on the fence, glass lamp globes perch on fence posts, broken pottery can be tucked under plants. And then there is the classic radio flyer wagon as picturesque portable nursery. I love using edibles in pots and it's another way to fill your pots and doing double duty. Um, herbs are especially great. A frosty, excuse me, a frothy parsley or unusual colored bale, kale or lettuce, nasturtium or marigold, add interest and flavor to your container plantings. I'm mostly just wanting to show off this lovely hosta, but yes, Pasta are edible, raw or cooked, especially the new and tender shoots. Okay, I've never done it, but maybe this is the year. Rain barrels can be money savers, especially if you pay for city utilities as we do in town here. We have a small pond and love being able to refill it from our rain barrel rather than from the hose. Even short-term water saving can cut down on your water usage. Sometimes if I know a big rain is coming, I put an empty garbage can under the eaves to collect enough gallons to fill up all my watering cans. Every little bit helps. You can compost your kitchen scraps and yard trimmings. It can be an elaborate or simple process, but don't be intimidated. Just do it. There are plenty of how-tos uh, at the extension or other sources for composting. Newspaper is, a, is an economical, weed barrier and creates a layer of mulch. Several layers of paper are very effective in getting new garden area prep for planting. It can eliminate the need for killing off existing grass and plants with Roundup or by tilling, especially if you're trying to establish a new, a new flower bed or, or vegetable bed. It might take some getting used to, but consider leaving leaves and dead plants as mulch rather than breaking it all away and having to replace it with purchased mulch. Uh, you'll want to discard any diseased plant material, but generally leaving natural material is good for both the plants and the animals who use the debris as habitat. I know right now in my backyard, there are happy robins cramming their beaks full of the stringy dried daylily leaves that I, let's say I left them on purpose for them. Um, some other money savers include mulch and black dirt from city yard waste dumps. I've used those resources in the past and now I, I'm being more careful because we have discovered the invasive jumping worm in Wisconsin, Wisconsin and even in Chippewa County and I believe Eau Claire County. You should check with your county extension agent to find out if jumping worms have been detected in your area. Uh, these worms and their cocoons may be transported with soil of that type and mulch or can be transported with dug plants. So be especially careful of sharing plants or buying them at plant sales from outside your area. Another thing to watch for from plant sales is aggressive or invasive plants. Some plants are easy to share because they multiply and spread very quickly but they can be what we refer to as garden thugs. They take over. And sometimes that is not, not worth the small price you paid at a, at a small plant sale if they cause you a lot of trouble. Every spring, when I resume my battle with creeping bellflower, I regret all over ever having accepted it from a friend many years ago. My rule of thumb is if it has creeping in its name, you probably don't really want it or you wanna think long and hard about it. Use good practices to have healthy growing conditions in plants. And if you have a problem, learn about it. I have been guilty of randomly adding fertilizer or using pesticides without really knowing if it was the right thing to do. Get a soil test. If a pest shows up, identify it. Learn about integrated pest management. And here's an example. First of all, in the photo, there is an ant and that ant is, is just going after some sap. It's not gonna harm your plants and, uh, it, and it has a good relationship with this peony bud. 
But another um, situation I had in my yard years ago, I found that a parsley plant had been almost completely eaten. It seemed like overnight. The culprit was still clinging to one of the few remaining stems. It was a black and green striped caterpillar that I'd never seen before. I was very annoyed, but decided to take the time to look the creature up before just taking drastic action. And I am glad I did, for now I know that parsley and dill are the host plants for the black swallowtail butterfly. I was so glad I did not wipe out the pest that would soon become a beautiful and somewhat rare in our landscape pollinator. Parsley grew back, of course. Now I plant dill and parsley every year with the intention of attracting butterflies. It's good to know your limits, but it's also good to support other gardeners and farmers. Um, an investment in the local agriculture community will have long-term benefits. We all do better when we all do better. If we were all to have bumper crops of everything, we would all have produce coming out of our ears and freezers. Do what you do best and let other people do what they do best and support them in that. This little tomato is a Juliet that I like to grow every year. And they grow abundantly for me, but I struggle to grow those big beefy slicing tomatoes. Um, so I'm very happy that others can, or I would never be able to indulge in one of the true joys of the harvest season, a decent BLT. Uh, I picked these little Juliets early to get them before the naughty chipmunks come along because they seem to like to take, to take a bite out of each and every one of them. Finally, after you've demonstrated frugality and pinched a few pennies, go ahead and splurge on something fun or useful, but not absolutely necessary. You've earned it. Thank you for your time. This talk was based on my own limited gardening experience. And as they say, your results may vary. Being a master gardener has taught me how much I don't know, but excuse me. <coughs> but it has put me on a path to knowing more. I'd encourage everyone to get involved in a Master Gardener program to grow what you know and help others grow too. Here are a few resources that I'll leave you with to help you find more information about some of the ideas and methods I've touched on today. Don't forget to check out the other videos in this gardening series. And remember when you have questions about any gardening related topic, Calling your county extension is a very good place to start. So thank you again for your time and happy gardening.